Well, uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, I hope I am audible to everyone. So first of all, uh, let me extend a very warm welcome to all of you uh, for another installment of our regular public lecture series organized by the Center for Bank Studies of Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Uh, as you know, this public lecture series is conducted uh, with the objective of creating awareness and triggering discussions on timely uh, topics related to economics. So today's lecture will also be on another very interesting topic, creative economy, strategy for Sri Lankan economic development for future, and will be delivered by uh, Professor Nari Nabesekara, head of the Department of uh, Marketing Management of Faculty of Management Studies of Open University of Sri Lanka. And uh, today also we have a very big audience uh, joining uh, via Zoom and uh, also from Facebook from all around the country and uh, beyond Sri Lankan borders also. Now, before we proceed, uh, let me explain all of you the flow of today's webinar. Uh, Professor Abhay Sekara will deliver his lecture in the first hour, and then uh, we will be having a Q&A session where we hope to accommodate your questions regarding what was discussed in the lecture. Uh, you can send your questions through the Q&A option in Zoom. And uh, if you are joining via Facebook, you can write your questions as a comment in the Facebook page also in the post. Uh, so we'll try to accommodate as much as questions given the interest of time. Uh, now with uh, great honor, I'd like to introduce the dignitaries of the expert panel today. Uh, today we have Governor of Central Bank of Sri Lanka, Deshamane, Professor W. D. Lakshman, and Deputy Governors of Central Bank, uh, Mr. K. M. M. Sirivardhan and Mrs. E. M. J. Y. P. Fernando, and Director of Economic Research Department of Central Bank, Dr. Chandranath Amarasekara, and our speaker today, Professor Nalin Abe Sekara. So before we proceed to the webinar, I'd like to uh, now invite the Governor of Central Bank of Sri Lanka, Deshamane, Professor W. D. Lakshman, to deliver opening remarks for the lecture. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. I warmly welcome all the participants for this seminar. The subject is going to be creative economy, strategy for Sri Lankan economic development for future. It is organized by the Central Bank's Center for Banking Studies. And I must note here that this is a continuation of a long-standing practice of the Central Bank done in the past by inviting the guests in person to deliver these orations. Uh, COVID-19 last year disrupted this practice. And I am happy that the Center for Banking Studies recommenced the practice in virtual form. This is the second webinar, webinar of this nature this year. Uh, both speakers chosen this year were from our own universities. Let me cordially welcome today's presenter of this webinar, Professor Nalin Abhisekara, Head, Department of Marketing Management, Faculty of Management Studies, Open University of Sri Lanka. In the last couple of years, Sri Lankan economy was affected by two major blows. In 2019, we experienced the Easter Sunday attacks. And since March 2020, we are witnessing the spread of COVID-19 and its multifarious repercussions. Thus, the time has come to make, I think, the paradigm shift in the Sri Lankan economy as well as in the thinking about the economy and economic policy. COVID-19 has sent up a message which we need to read with insight and a preparedness for change. In Sri Lanka, we are still hanging on to traditional ways of doing things and on more or less same production lines and same services, more or less. Some out of the box thinking and strategizing is required. 
to compete in the global market. I observe that in this webinar, Professor Amar, Professor Abhishekara, he is focusing on how the concept of creative economy can be used as a new strategy for the country to achieve sustainable economic development. Therefore, it is worthwhile to understand the meaning and implications of creative economic concept. I believe it is Professor John Hopkins Hawkins first published his ideas on creativity and innovation in a 2001 book, The Creative Economy, How People Make Money from Ideas. According to Professor Hawkins, the term creative economy refers to the socioeconomic potential of activities that trade with creativity, knowledge, and information. At the heart of the creative economy are the industries that lie at the crossroads of arts, culture, business, and technology, including ad advertising, architecture, arts and crafts, design, fashion, design, fashion, film, video, photography, music, performing arts, publishing, research, and development. Software, computer games, electronic publishing, and TV, radio, et cetera, et cetera. The above excludes almost all economic activities like agricultural and manufacturing pursuits as we know them today. How do we bring these activities, agricultural and manufacturing, into this creative economic concept within an emerging country perspective. The cultural industries, meanwhile, focus on cultural tourism and heritage, museums and library, hobbies and sports and outdoor activities. Together, they comprise an adjunct division of the creative industries. Whereas the creative industries provide financial value, cultural industries to afford social and emotional value. While individual industries, for example, in manufacturing and finance, might see fluctuations during business cycle as a whole, these activities in creative industry framework are considered to be largely somewhat immune to precariousness of the business cycle. A number of economists believe that governments, private companies, and non-profit organizations across the world are increasingly recognizing the importance of creative industries as a generator of jobs, wealth, and cultural engagement. We have anyway the habit of picking up ideas like this coming from various countries and institutions. And to go on talking about these for some time, when nothing concrete comes to comes out of these discussions, people tend to forget these ideas and go back to do things as they have been used to for years. It would therefore be useful for a person like Professor Abhishekar addressing us today to refer to practical ways of using these ideas in the real economy we are living in. With this concept of creative economy, there, is, there are perhaps concrete strategic openings for Sri Lanka. As citizens of the country, we need to get together and work towards ex exploiting the opportunities that emerge with the opening of this new window. How do we do this? I think Professor Abhay Sekera will give us food for thought. With that, I now request, with that, I now try to 
conclude my presentation. Thank you very much. But let me tell you, my name has been mentioned as part of the panel. I would like to be there as long as possible. But since I'm having a little bit of uh, weakness because of a health problem, I will probably not stay long uh, as a panel member. I will stay as long as possible and then leave the uh, computer screen. But in the meantime, thank you very much for organizing this and Pradabhya Shekhar, have a good time. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for delivering opening remarks and setting the exact tone uh, for the webinar. Uh, now I'll spend a couple of minutes to introduce our speaker today. Uh, Professor Nail Nabes Sekara is the head of uh, Department of Marketing Management of Faculty of Management Studies of Open University of Sri Lanka. And he's a graduate uh, from University of Sri Jawaharlal with BSc Marketing Special Degree. And he's Senior Lecturer for Strategic Management, Marketing, Research Methodology with research and lecturing exposure in several countries, such as Canada, Dubai, Singapore, Malaysia, Oman, Qatar, and India. In 2018, Professor Abe Sekar has been awarded as the Outstanding Asian Educator by International Association of Scholarly Publishers, Editors, and Reviewers, uh, what we call as IASPR. Uh, Professor Nailna Abe Sekar is the author or the co-author of many international journal articles, uh, conference papers, and books. Furthermore, he is serving as a reviewer for many international journals, including Journal of Services Marketing, Journal of Management Development, Journal of uh, Applied Research in Higher Education, and the International Review of Research in Open and Distributed uh, Learning. He's a recipient of uh, three gold medals, Strategic Management, Marketing Management, and Dissertation, for his performance in his degree of Masters of uh, from Minister of, Sri, uh, Minister of Colombo in Sri Lanka. In the year 2010, he has been uh, shortlisted as the best reviewer by International Journal in Contemporary Management Research, which is a B grade journal of ABCD ranking. He has also served on many panels, such as uh, PhD Colloquium, Media and IT. And, and currently, he is serving as the editor in chief of Sri Lanka Journal of Management Studies. So, uh, with that rich profile, without further ado, let me now invite Professor Besekara to commence the lecture. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Professor Nalin, Abhay Sekhar. How about you, sir? Yeah, thank you very much, Kushan. Uh, thank you very much for uh, one of my lecturers for Faculty of Graduate Studies, uh, Governor, Deshaman Professor W.D. Lakshman. Today, we are going to discuss about uh, one of the very interesting topic, something very much related to creative industry, uh, creative economy for Sri Lankan economic development for future. So especially now at the moment, whatever the time uh, we start to discuss about uh, Sri Lankan economy. So there are certain uniqueness we can see. <coughs> People uh, always talking about the COVID pandemic scenario. In the COVID pandemic scenario, most of the countries, they say they heavily affected because of the COVID pandemic. But in our country, in Sri Lanka, so already I just want to discuss this with two different blows. <coughs> Why we are talking about two different blows? Number one, I think in year 2019, we experienced an East attack. So in East attack, so we have witnessed, so we ex expected uh, 2.5 million tourists but unfortunately, we received only 1.9 tourists. So that is only one particular indicator. But here you can see there are certain uh, newspapers with the credible sources. They say Easter warming damage Sri Lankan economy beyond tourism. And Sri Lanka Central Bank report low growth in 2019 due to East attack. So in East attack, so we can remember after five, six months time, most of the experts, they commented. Sri Lanka start to get a sort of a recovery from the East attack. But unfortunately, last year, we witnessed the blow number two 
the COVID-19. I think you know, the 2020, there's a negative economic growth, 3.6%. And also in 2021, anyway, we are expecting an economic growth around 3 to 4%. But what we need to understand, most of the time, whatever the news we are going to hear, whatever the television advertisements, and again, with certain communication we are going to take, we always get in the negative news. Negative news is not good for our aura as well. But, you know, like most of the countries, especially in the pandemic scenario, they discuss about the positives. Say one of the, say like tomorrow newspaper, there will be one positive news, maybe one leading newspaper on the Peradenia Botanical Garden, where you have very like identical flower being discovered. So people will get a certain positives. So how in Sri Lankan context, we can discuss about positives. If you're really talking about the numbers, so last year, say August, September, October, November, December, so some new business, they start to register in Sri Lanka. So that is one of the positive side. Even though we can see the pandemic scenario, the economy being like severely affected, but people start to have new businesses. They want to do something different. And specifically, so 2021 budget, so, so that it offers many relief for SMEs. So this is one of the quotation by Chairman, International Chamber of Commerce of Sri Lanka. He noted that the budget proposal can be described as progressive and business friendly with emphasis and focus on encouraging local entrepreneurship, skill development, boosting exports, and fostering local SMEs. And also, so we are talking about certain positives. We are always keep in mind, Sri Lanka ranks the highest in the South Asian region, the World Bank Human Capital Index. The World Bank Human Capital Index discuss about the education and health sector. In South Asian region, two in a row, we've been ranked in terms of highest in World Bank Human Capital Index. So there are certain positives we need to understand. And in strategic management, we discuss about something called a strategic window at the moment, which has opened for Sri Lanka. So what is the meaning of strategic window? A strategic window, technically we say, a temporary time period, the opportunity being created for the country. But before the window is going to close, we have to grab the opportunity. So this is the best time where the opportunity being created for the country. Even though we have this pandemic scenario, the new business they want to start, they are looking for different avenues, different faces, different perspectives. Not only that, people start to discuss about this entrepreneurship and all. So this is the best time we need to understand to start to have sort of a paradigm shift in Sri Lankan economy. Usually, you just go to Google and type Sri Lankan economy. So here we will mainly get certain different algorithms. So here we say Sri Lanka is a developing economy based largely on agriculture, services, and light industry. Agriculture accounts for approximately 21% of the gross domestic product and employs 38% of the workforce. So usually, if you type Sri Lankan economy, mainly get something called agribase even though the GDP contribution for the service sector is around 56 to 58%. But in this particular like discussion on the creative economy, we are not going to tell there is no need for agriculture. So agriculture, we need to discuss with value additions. We need to think something in a different way. So that is the main argument with this creative economy. And also what we have to understand it's the importance of moving away from the traditional markets, such as manufacturing, and see the creative industry as a key strategy in a new knowledge economy. Nowadays, we start to discuss about knowledge management, we discuss about knowledge economy. So what 
is the actual meaning of creative economy. We need to revisit, we need to understand. So that is really important. So what is creative economy? So according to John Hawkins, the author of the creative economy, how people make money from idea. So Professor Hawkins, he defined creative industry as creative industry refers to a range of economic activities which are concerned with the generation of exploitation, generation or exploitation of knowledge and information. So here also we are talking about knowledge and information. So these things we considered as assets. But we can sum up creative economy as the income earning potential of creative activities and ideas. So income earning potential of creative activities and idea. So it means technically under creative economy, we discuss about photography, graphic design, fashion design, filmmaking, architecture, publishing, video games and more. Now because of this COVID-19 scenario, most of the school children, now they're at home, they are with online learning, but I have witnessed there are certain like kids around say six, eight years, they have their video games, they start to study certain things, but we need to nurture them because that also we consider as part of creative economy. So Hawkins actually he divide the creative economy in 15 sectors. I think one of the article where I can remember they say, so it goes across to the reggae to opera in Australia. So everything comes under creative economy. Advertising, architecture, art, craft, design, fashion, film, music, performing arts, publishing, research and development, software, toys and games, TV and radio, and video games. So all comes under the creative economy. So this is very important. So in that particular context, there is one interesting remark by Andy Pratt, Andy Pratt, professor of cultural economy at the University of London. So where are the professor he aligned the nature of work in the culture and creative industry. So he argued the nature of work in the cultural and creative industry says one of the three main areas are worthy of attention, particularly for developing countries. So they want to relate the creative industry into the cultural aspect. So in Sri Lanka, we discuss about our civilization. We discuss about Shigiriya and Polonnaruwa. So how we can incorporate that into creative industry or creative economy is the challenge. And also, the snowball, professor of economics, right? So that also we have to take into consideration the snowball believes that cultural trade is the nexus between creativity and globalization. So I think uh, even Albert Einstein, he mentioned the imagination is more important than knowledge. So cultural trade is the nexus between creativity and globalization. So a more equal distribution of creativity can provide a way for emerging markets or developing countries to benefit from both creativity and culture and globalization. So how we can link the culture, creativity into globalization? Now we go to Sigiriya, we can see one of the nice destinations. Some people, they want to claim Sigiriya as eighth wonder in the world. So if you want to like discuss that in the marketing perspective, there is one of the theme I contributed in Daily News, one of the articles I, I have written, I just put, I left my heart in Sigiriya. So likewise, so we need to link our culture into our imagination and creativity. So that is the challenge. So that also we need to understand. So if you're really talking about our culture, Sri Lankan culture embedded with different facets, the pottery industry in Sri Lanka. So we can see the hard work, the creativity and imagination, but one part is missing that we need to understand, that we need to revisit. Not only the pottery industry, the handloom industry in Sri Lanka. 
So we can see the batik industry, the handloom industry, there are certain innovativeness can be seen with the people. So we say still they are in the poverty line, but how we can take them, empower them, because you know, the handloom industry in Sri Lanka, maybe the pottery, the contribution of the female is really important. Because whatever the country in the labor force, the female contribution we consider as really important. One of the economics in Bangladesh, he mentioned, if you can increase the female contribution by 10% more, then we can increase the GDP by 1%. Because unfortunately, in Asian context, only 15 to 20% female contribution for the labor force can be seen, right? That remark is really interesting. If you can increase the female labor force for 10%, we can increase the GDP by 1%. So we need to understand, we have to motivate the entrepreneurs. The small, medium entrepreneurship is really important because you know, country like us, they are the one SMEs, they are contributing around 50 to 52% of the employment for the country and also the G, for the GDP contribution also around 50 to 52%. So, but we need to give them the dignity. So that is, that is really important. So everything we discuss under the creative industry, creative economy in the world. So this is really motivating. So this study already been done by United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO, on creative industries and micro and small scale enterprise development. So this is really interesting, a contribution to poverty ele elevation. In this article, they discuss about certain countries, the how we can address to the poverty by looking at the different creative industries in micro and small scale. So here you can see in the same article, some countries like Iran, Thailand, Pakistan. So there are different aspects, different industries. We've been mentioned for Sabah of Iran, then keys in Pakistan, uh, different clothing, then Chapa Alex in Pakistan, so you can browse and you can see. So why not Sri Lankan handloom industry? Why can't we put that into a creative economy basket? There are many, you know, like contributors in the globe, not only developed countries, developing countries. So there should be a mechanism for our country. So this is one of the very important aspect we need to think of in Sri Lanka. The sector of creative economy we need to establish so there are many investors, there are many contributors. We have learned the success stories. So I can remember last year in China, one of the cosmetic company severely affected for COVID pandemic. So they have to close 40% of their businesses, but ultimately with their creativity and imagination, they took around 100, beauticians and they use a different uh, social media platform called WeChat. They motivate the people who are at home. Ultimately, they increase their revenue by 200%. The imagination creativity factor is really important. So in Sri Lanka also, we need to learn from the success stories. So we have our own competencies, KPIs, key performance indicators we need to measure but we have to learn from the success stories. That is quite challenging. In that particular perspective, I want to discuss about a very interesting comparison between Nollywood versus Ranmini Tandem. I think we start to discuss about this creative economy for Sri Lanka. So this is something I extracted from another article I have written 10, 11 years back. And this Nollywood versus Ramini Tan also contributed for Asian Tribune in year 2012. This daily FT article also around 2011. 
So most of the time, if you start to discuss about Nollywood, people are asking, sir, is that uh, something related to Bollywood? Because usually we like to discuss about Hollywood and Bollywood. The time I have written this article, so 10 years back, uh, the Nollywood was number three, but at the moment they were number two in world film industry. What is Nollywood? What is Nollywood? So that is a very, very interesting. Nollywood we considered as the Nigerian film industry. They produce certain films and teledramas aligned with the sentiments of African countries. So the consumer behavior is a different part where we have to discuss that in a different forum. But what you need to understand? The emergence of Nollywood is remarkable, right? And came into world picture into within 20 years. According to PwC, the Nigerian film industry in Nollywood is globally recognized as the second largest film producer in the world. The industry is a significant part of the arts, entertainment and recreation sector, which contributed 2.3 Nigerian currencies, 239 billion to Nigerian GDP in the year 2016. So it is one of the priorities to identify the economic recovery and growth plan of the federal government to Nigeria with the plan. US dollars 1 billion in export revenue by 2020. One of the success stories. Per year, they are producing more than 1,000 films. And also, there's a huge demand. So they have economics of scale, and they have their competencies. So we are in that article, I compared the Nollywood with Run Minitan Film Village. I think those who visited to Run Minitan Film Village, very close to Hambantu, you can see. Now, my surrounding, <coughs> a place, the ambience, but that is one part is missing. What is the part which is missing? People should come and start the business. We need to learn lessons. Our university undergraduates should do studies, a comparative study between Ranmini Thanna and Nollywood. And what are the competencies possessed by them? What are the competencies possessed by us? And there should be benchmarking. So that's why here we mentioned, you know, see undergrads in Sri Lanka can do a study on Nollywood and see the key successful factors or key factors for succession and uniqueness in the film industry. We can then see how we can apply these sort of models with some modification because we should always understand something called localization in the Sri Lankan context with Ramin Tanna. So this is really important for us to understand. So we discussed about this Chinese example. Now this Nollywood. So still number one is Bollywood, number two Nollywood. Then we are talking about Hollywood. So we have learned from the success stories, benchmarking. So that is one of the very important thing aligned with the creative economy and also what are the challenges for Sri Lanka? So, to have a paradigm shift, there are certain challenges. Still, in the country as citizens, we need to understand this country, we are now with two different laws in economy. So, we need to understand the responsibility towards the country. And also, Sri Lanka education system should produce entrepreneurs. So whatever the time we go to the universities, we can see, we are talking about something called employees, dependent mentality, but the developed countries always taking the country advantage because of the entrepreneurs. In higher education system, we need to inculcate entrepreneurship. One of the good example, Javadanapur University, in final year, we have Dulanjana Vitanagi. So he actually, one of the students in uh, 
department of marketing university of sri jawardhanapura is doing business in one of the product in jackfruit cost posher product so i just ask him so how you have got this idea he just mentioned sir in the first year in the university just show him down in my village in gol to akudahena there are many fruits being wasted i start to think why these fruits and all be wasted i have to think something in a different way so you know the way you start to think like you, you have the belongingness to the country so with this cost posher i think he already got the patent for cost posher and he diversified his business aligned with the jackfruit so another classic example the graduate is becoming an entrepreneur there are many other examples we can discuss because you know in sri lanka vegetable and fruits 550000 tons been wasted per year 60, 67 billion sri lanka rupees wasted no proper supply chain so but you need to have people think in a positive way not only in the high education system the education k12 education system so most of the time we like to discuss about these foreign examples why not we can discuss something on dulanjani vitanagi case study then the it should be embedded for to the dna for our generation we have to always communicate the message the risk taking is important and how the people respect for the entrepreneurs so this creative economy in sri lanka how like we can incorporate into our particular system there should be an entity for the country in creative economy united nations and different institutes they are helping even it should come under higher education institute even central bank so there should be a collaboration between higher education institutes in sri lanka the private sector and also there should be a unit for a creative economy for the country so all these heirlooms water and everything should comes under that particular unit because we need to think something in a holistic perspective because every time in the country we are witness we always address into the surface problem right we have to understand the real issue of the country the country needs a paradigm shift but unfortunately we always like to put the blame to a different party but as citizens we need to understand our own responsibility that is also very important then yes we can do it so we discuss about some positives not only that particular positives we need to understand there are many other factors also we need to take into consideration what are the factors we need to understand so we already discussed about sigiria the water cooling system in sigiria still could not properly defined by certain professors in the world the architecture design the hydraulic system and all and also in polonnaru recently one of the hospital the asian hospital been discovered even you can witness the surgical equipment source we have rich history with the civilization with the tradition so that we need to understand not only that so here the cnn the report the cnn the report the early human living on the island of sri lanka 48000 years ago crafted tools from animal bones and used them to hunt monkeys and squirrels so this sri goes for 48000 years so what about the current scenario at the moment we can see individually as a group people start to do something unique the sri tarts by our young people so last year we have witnessed that so i think i can remember we are one of the visit we went to malaysia penang so they considered the sri tart is one of the 
attractive tour for tourism. The boy with the cycle, one of the street art in Penang. Whatever the tourists visit to Penang, they want to take a selfie there because they say it's a kind of a icon for them to like say like they visited to that particular place. So it means technically our young generation with their creativity and all, as a team, they have done a quality work. But the tourism sector should understand that potentials like Penang, and they have to incorporate that into tourism. Right? The one of the tourists come to Sri Lanka, so visit to a specific place where the, the young people has done certain activities with arts and all, take a photo will motivate the young people. Then uh, again, we are talking about this Nalaka Sena Dira. The one person, the solo person, doing recultivating in paddy field. And I already discussed about this Dulanjana Vitanagi, then Madushka Disanayaka, we are talking about digital entrepreneurship. Then uh, this coconut water by Mahapumara. So this is only a few examples. What you need to understand, most of the entrepreneurs, most of the citizens who feel like responsibility towards the country, they started to do certain things. So technically, creative economy, we need to take into one particular bracket and have a holistic approach for this. This is one of the very important things. And also, a love for tradition has never weakened a nation. Indeed, it has strengthened the nation in the hour of peril. So this is one of the interesting remark by Winston Churchill. So especially in creative economy, we need to understand the importance of creative economy and certain factors. Now we are going to which we are going to watch a small video of 10 minutes time on one of the remark made aligned with the South Africa. You can see how the creative industry is going to be the future for different continent in the world. So I will share that video with you. Hi. I was wondering how many people have spent money recently to go and watch a movie? Anybody? Yes, good. How about to go and buy a book, fiction, a novel? Anybody? Wonderful, so many. How about to go to the disco to dance the night away to music? <laughs> yes, I thought so. That's wonderful. It means you have all participated in the creative economy. It is my great pleasure today to share with you my passion, which is the creative economy in Africa, and to introduce to you my latest project, which is the culmination of my life's work, which is called Creative Africa. Creative Africa is a comprehensive creative economy for sub-Saharan Africa. We are doing training, we are doing product development, we are doing production, and we are doing distribution on several platforms. Most important, of course, in the internet age is the internet, the digital platform. So why am I so passionate about the creative economy? Well, in all my experience as a copywriter, a novelist, a playwright, a poet, a filmmaker, a festival director and a teacher, I have come to realize that the creative economy is one of the key strategies for Africa's sustainable development. We know the problems we have on our continent and they can be summed up in one word, poverty. Yes, there has been economic development in the last decade or so, but it's tended to stay in certain sectors of society. It hasn't trickled down to the people. We have governments in many of our countries whose policies are not pro-citizen. 
and this tends to exacerbate inequality. So we have a huge issue on our hands, and I believe that huge issues require big fixes. And for me, the big fix is the creative economy. An economy is a system where value circulates. You value music in a disco, you go and pay money. That money then goes on to do other things. Now, in the traditional economy, the things that are valued are resources like land, like raw materials. How many of us have access to those things in this room? Not many of us, I think. With the creative economy, the things that are valued are the things that we have in our minds, that we have in our hearts and our souls, that we have in our gut, our emotions. The creative economy values those products that come from our imagination. And I always tell my students when I'm teaching creative writing that imagination comes from experience. So our experience as who we are is our raw material. As an example of this, I want to tell you about the Cameroonian-born writer, Imbolombue, who set a record with the advance for her first novel of a hundred million dollars. Was it? It was one million. Excuse me. It was one million. But anyway, that's a huge sum of money for a first novel called Behold the Dreamers. Has anyone read it? Nobody yet. Anyway, this is her African story, born out of her African experience, valued to that extent. Another African-born writer who has unlocked a lot of value from her writing is Chimamanda Adichie. Chimamanda Adichie regularly goes back to Nigeria, where she's from, and she holds workshops to enable other young writers to produce their products. She also has a publishing house where she helps other young writers to get their products out. So this is the creative economy in action. Another thing about the creative economy is that it is extremely powerful. Not only does it put products in markets, but it also puts representations of the world into society and into our minds. When we engage with these products, these novels, these films, this music, it becomes part of our experience. And so it also determines who we are and how we see the world. And it also determines how we relate to ourselves. So the creative economy is very powerful in determining the kinds of values that are put into society. Well organized, the creative economy can put positive values into society and can help to shape society in that way. An example comes from my work, my novel Nervous Conditions, written many years ago, is a novel about women's emancipation. I still get invited to read or to talk about that work, and wherever in the world, from Switzerland to South Africa, wherever in the world I am, women come up to me afterwards and they say, thank you so much for that book, it really helped me to work out some of the issues I had in my life. Increasingly in Zimbabwe, when I talk to young people, young men, they say to me, we're beginning to realize that we shouldn't be treating the women in our life like that, our sisters and so forth. So this is a power of the creative economy. Another power of the creative economy comes from the fact that it can put into society new ideas that did not exist in society. A wonderful example comes from Kenya, Ngugi Wathiongo. Everyone's heard of Ngugi, right? Yeah, and he's been writing for decades on how we can have better communities, better leaders, better institutions, better nations. It's taken time, but people have engaged with these ideas. Other people have written about them. They have become part of the discourse, the public discourse. And now we see change, political change, 
creeping onto the continent. We had Burkina Faso a couple of years ago. Now we have Gambia. Now we see what's happening in Tanzania. So the creative economy is also very powerful in that respect. People often say that the crisis in Africa is a crisis of leadership. I always respond by saying, I believe that the crisis in Africa is a crisis of personhood. We don't know who we are, we don't have the right values, and there are reasons for this, some of them economic. The creative economy can lift us out of poverty because we all have the resources that are required to participate in it, especially in the internet age. It can give us positive representations. It can give us ideas that enable us to make the best of our nations and our situations. A challenge has been that it was said that representations of black people do not find a market. There are historical reasons for that that I'm not going to go into. I will say, however, one of the most successful films of the last two months is Hidden Figures. Anyone seen Hidden Figures yet? Yes, exactly right. Released on Christmas Day last year, has grossed, wait for it, 227.5 million. That's on a budget of 25 million. And that is a film about African-American women mathematicians who helped to put a man on the moon. So yes, we can have creative products about black people in the market that do well. Coming closer to home, we have Hotel Rwanda. Again, anybody It's a little bit older? Anybody? You see? That film had a budget of 17.5 million. How much did it gross? 33.8 million tidy profit. So it can be done. So this is why I say that smart investment in the creative economy is one of the things we have to drive for. And this is why I have developed my vehicle, Creative Africa, to cater for that. The challenge that we have is that the products I have mentioned, including my novel Nervous Conditions, are all owned off the continent. So all those millions are going off the continent. People are wary, they say, well, can this work on the continent of Africa? There are so many issues to consider. Well, let's consider the issue of Nollywood that everybody knows about. 530 million a year turnover from Nollywood. Nollywood is now the second biggest employer in Nigeria after agriculture. It's lifting people <clears throat> out of poverty and it's giving them a future. At my organization, the Institute of Creative Arts for Progress in Africa, we say when we change Africa, we change the world. And I really hope that you will, in the not too distant future, be able to engage with the products that are coming out of Creative Africa and that together we will see this change taking place on our beloved continent. Thank you. So that is one of the interesting, uh, thought-provoking ideas. So, what we need to understand, we have to Good change. grammar and spelling are important, but if you, you have to understand to essays that inspire, Sri Lanka, so messages and that for wider you know, connections, it will eventually change the world. Right? Change Sri Lanka, then it will eventually will change the world. So, that is one of the very important observation that we need to address. And again, if you're really talking about this uh, creative economy, and if you really discuss about how we can inculcate the creative economy, we need to understand uh, like what are the challenges? We already discussed certain challenges, but what uh, we can like witness most of the time. So as I discuss with you, the responsibility of the citizens we consider that's really important. So most of the time, like we, we discuss about a certain different ingredients. So what is the language we have used? So, so people are talking about something called financial literacy. 
is very important problem at the moment for SME sector. So if you want to educate something on financial literacy, what is the language we are going to use for the general public? So we have to use their native language, either Sinhala or Tamil. But what is the Sinhala word for financial literacy? It say Moolya Shakshuratave. So that is something where it's very difficult to digest for the general common public. So I happens to talk to one of the great communicator, Mr. Palita Pereira. He discussed with me how certain jargons in English in cricket converted with the help of the literature, with the help of the uh, like certain like background of our own Sri Lankan culture into the language in cricket. One example is Kadul for wicket. So the people who are in the village, they can understand. So here we are going to propose, instead of putting a jargon like financial, for the financial literacy, we say, Moolya Shakshara So then people, I don't think we can just target for the general public because SME sector is a totally different sector. So native language might be in Sinhala, might be in Tamil, we have to carefully consider it. That is one of the important suggestions we need to understand. So there are many success stories in Sri Lanka we have to, you know, like celebrate. So we have to motivate in the education system, as I clearly mentioned. So these are the like considerations we need to understand. Not only that, now already we discussed about the women contribution. In Sri Lanka, the women participation for the labor force is around 29 to 30%. But in some South Asian countries like India, it's around 60 to 17%. But what I already communicated, one of the economics in Bangladesh he mentioned, if, he, if Bangladesh can increase 10% more women participation in labor force, they can increase the GDP by 1%. The economic activities in Sri Lanka may be handloom, may be pottery. So done by female, we need to motivate them about their like contribution towards the country. And also we are talking about something on how we can market our products. I can remember two years back in Morato University, one of the lecture in e-commerce. So we have given the student a small assignment to market Sri Lankan coconut. So we are in Sri Lankan coconut. It's one of the very interesting example. We asked them to type Sri Lankan coconut on Google and see, and also compare that with Thailand coconut. Sri Lankan coconut, I agree, we are very good products, value added products, but unfortunately, if you type Sri Lankan coconut on Google, you can see there are certain people climbing up. But you type Thailand coconut on Google, then we can see the value addition products and all. It doesn't say in Sri Lanka we don't have value addition products. We have value addition products, but there's a problem of proper marketing. So in Sri Lanka, we have more than 5,000 destinations where we need to have websites. We have to link that into creative economy. And uh, this video, more importantly, more interestingly discuss about the film industry, publications, then again, gaming. So as I clearly communicated, these are the like industries where we need to always consider, consider and more importantly, we need to understand the potentials of the market. Because this creative economy has been extensively discussed for the last two decades in the world. So in Sri Lanka also, we start to discuss about this for the last one decade. So what we need to understand, we can see individuals, the young people, school children even, they have come up with different products. I happens to participate for Kerala India, one of the Innovative either the particular 
uh, group with the help of the government they initiate to motivate the innovative ideas for young young people so they came up with the innovative idea the budget and the creative ideas so they have a system that is similar to one of the western countries to benchmark to motivate and they actually most of the innovative ideas selected the government the particular kerala that particular community they are going to fund for the creative ideas because so uh, you can see the sri lankans with creativity but we have to encourage them there should be entity for the country to encourage them there should be entity for the country to understand their potential and again the lockdown situation i think uh, you know now there are certain times we ask okay we have locked down the country but the united nations one of the expert david nabaru he mentioned if you start to lock down the country the poor people get lot poorer so what we need to understand this is the best time for the country so as i clearly indicated the strategic window has opened for the country so we need to understand the potentials the education system should address to certain potentials of the country and also there should be a proper mechanism proper entity in creative economy where they need to have a holistic approach not only with the economic sector with tourism agriculture then we can see like what mention we change sri lanka then we can change the world so that is one of the very important remark i just want to communicate so this is the basic uh, communication we are going to make so i would like to thanks the governor deshamani professor wd lakshman deputy governor mr k m m srivardhan deputy governor mrs k m t y p fernando director economic research dr c amra sekar and uh, kushan lak chena for coordinating so any questions you have at the moment then you can raise thank you uh Yes, Professor. Thank you very much uh, for that valuable lecture. Uh, I guess we have a few questions uh, in the lineup, uh, so let's take uh, one by one uh, without uh, taking much time. Uh, now, one of these uh, issues that we have seen is now to operationalize a model of creative economy, uh, kind of a coordinated effort has to be launched. It can be. Uh, education uh, financing uh, government support as well as uh, private sector participants so all these uh, sectors have to be brought into an one umbrella so uh, what kind of institutional framework you can suggest to operationalize this yes uh, so very interesting question simply uh, the central bank as a bankers of nation right so we can initiate central bank can initiate a creative economy unit where there can be certain collaboration with the private sector the public sector because you know now what we need to understand the creative economy there is no alienation between the concept of other countries so if you can start a unit in creative economy and whatever the ministries maybe agriculture maybe tourism maybe we discuss about something on economic affairs so all the representatives should comes under one umbrella with the representative of the sme sector so then only we can see a unit to create economy and then we can you know like have a collaboration with united nations then because there is a relationship between culture and the creative economy so i think we already discuss about that with the globalization so ultimately with a good entity with a specific entity for the country so in coming years like in the presentation made by that uh, lady so in sri lanka also we can do some wonders because we have potentials we discuss about this polonnaru hospital ancient hospital and history of the country but how like we can have a specific model aligned with the creative economy to make sri lanka for a better country i think i hope i answer for your question yes professor thank you very much for that and uh, 
on a different note, like these uh, cultural and uh, creative industries uh, can face different challenges in, in global terms. Now, for example, let's say uh, issues with intellectual property rights or copyrights. Those can be certain issues. So do you think that we uh, need changes to the legislation uh, in order to address these challenges, especially with this uh, copyright and uh, intellectual property issues? Exactly. Uh, so these are the problems in as a developing country we are facing. So intellectual rights, there, there should be a legal framework for that. Even in Sri Lanka, we have witnessed we don't have proper consumer society. In some countries, so they have consumer societies, they are very powerful. Even though in Sri Lanka, we have different acts on consumer protection, I consider them as toothless tigers. So there should be a kind of a legal framework, there should be a different consumer societies to look after the consumer protection that should be there because the mechanism itself because uh, within one day two days i don't think we can do wonders but it will take more time but we have to initiate this that is the challenge i guess yes professor thank you thank you for that and uh, apart from that uh, now as I understood, these, these new ideas and creativity will not be helpful only for creative industries. But uh, can't we think of some, some sort of a spillover effect on other industries also? Maybe with uh, improved designs and maybe improved brandings. So other, other industries can also get help of this creativity. So what, what's your take on that? Yeah, exactly. Now, even though we discuss about 12 to 30 factors. So we need to understand that as a simple framework. But as a country, what we have to do, we have to broaden the horizons. There may be like uh, innovativeness in the branding, maybe certain things for different products. So we can discuss something on uh, our own cultural, like product services and all. So, mm, because you know, like we, the framework being given, the modification of the framework according to the context of the country is a challenge for us. So that is something that we need to understand. Even though we condense that into, say like gaming, digital architecture and all, we can broaden the horizons. Then only we can get the uniqueness because if someone talking about Sri Lanka for last 50, 60 years, people will start to discuss about number one, Sri Lankan Ceylon team. Number two, so yesterday we celebrated 25th of our cricket World Cup winning. So these are the certain things we have to celebrate. But what we need to understand, the competencies can be seen. And also again, I come into that particular context of the native language, especially for the people who are in the grassroots level, maybe entrepreneurs, we have to identify that particular aspect as well. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Professor. And uh, we have a question uh, regarding the banking sector transformation. Now, uh, he's asking how the banking sector can uh, transform itself uh, to assist these uh, creative economic efforts, uh, given the risk factors that uh, are inherent to such industries. So I think uh, maybe uh, someone from Central Bank uh, institution uh, can answer that question. Uh, Deputy Governor, uh, this is Panandu, probably uh, if you can mention something about it, how the banking sector can transform itself uh, to ensure such creative economy efforts will be accommodated. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate Professor Abhishekar for bringing this experience, sharing his thoughts with us. This is something we always hear, but you have brought up some examples and with some country experiences, and it is very timely knowledge. You wanted us to look at these strategic windows, grab the opportunities, and also move from the traditional markets to the knowledge economy and be part of this creative economy basket. So I think uh, that 
taking from there, the banking sector too has to now move from their traditional ways of looking at financing the economic activities and take a clue from these creative uh, opportunities that are available, which I really think uh, banks are also in a very small way now taking up, looking at it because they see the opportunities, they see the competition in the normal traditional way of doing business, and also they are compelled to change their course to be in line with these uh, new things that are coming because we know the person day customer is quite different from the traditional customer. They want uh, different products, they want different services, they want uh, it in a different way. So uh, I agree with the, Sean that the uh, banking sector definitely will have to uh, change their course of action and move towards uh, facilitating this uh, creative of economy uh, basket. And also there should be a very active, proactive partner in this process then only I think as a country, as an economy, uh, our country can benefit out of these opportunities. Uh, several banks I know in small ways, as I said, has also already embarked into this area. And we know there's a value of SMEs to our economy. Even now central bank also has taken certain positive steps to kind of have certain uh, mandatory requirements to, uh, in expanding the uh, SME sector. So definitely this is going to be helpful and I'm sure banking sector will also take note of what is discussed today and that will also enhance their uh, knowledge in this area and will definitely uh, cooperate and then provide the necessary facilitation. Yes, uh, thank you very much uh, Deputy Governor Mr. Fernando for that uh, idea on how, how banking sector can transform itself to accommodate its changes. Uh, and again, I have a question to uh, Professor Abesekar. Now, as you mentioned uh, in the lecture, now uh, Professor Hawkins had divided uh, the creative economy into different uh, sectors. When I saw that list, this uh, fashion, films, music, performing arts, toys and uh, games, video, TV, radio. When I saw that list, now if you, if you think about the Sri Lankan parents, so those are the sort of prohibited list for kids, right? So. Uh, how we can initiate this paradigm shift needed. And uh, what I felt was sometimes uh, the values and the culture of particular society can also be a barrier to uh, embark on a creative economic journey. So how can we uh, get into this paradigm shift? Yeah, it's a really interesting question because uh, you know now in Sri Lanka, the education sector of this country now we discuss about the quantity and the quality. Now quantity wise, the small kid, uh, only 20 kilos of weight, bring a bag of 15 kilos. But you know, even in India, in some districts, they have set up the standards. Grade seven students, they have to have only six kilos of bag, something like that. But in Sri Lanka, I'm talking about the quality versus quantity. But in education system, so we say we have to get the examples from Finland and different countries. But I really believe in Sri Lanka, you go through the, the books written by Martin Vikramasinghe, how the children, those days, they enjoy it. So we have to get the examples of Finland, but we have to combine that into Martin Vikramasinghe, right? Localization. So it's the part. Unfortunately, now in strategic management, we discuss about a model called uh, like stuck in the middle scenario, Porter's generic model. You don't know you are in the cost leadership, even you don't know you are in the differentiation. We discuss something called like stuck in the middle. But in Sri Lanka also at the moment, I think in our education, in different sectors, we are in the stuck in the middle scenario. So we need to be very like we need to be crystal clear. It should start with the education system, right? K-12, grade one to 12 education system into universities. So that is one of the challenge for the country. Maybe take 10 years, but we are talking about sustainable development. It should be for long run, right? I hope I answered for the question. Yes, Professor, very much. And uh, finally, uh, now this, uh, 
PPPs, uh, public and private sector partnerships. So how we can uh, use these to ensure uh, the creative economy is triggered within a country? So what are the arrangements that we can have for such thing? Yeah, so we have always opted out two different egos. So public sector, private sector, we are talking, we always discuss something called collaboration. But I have witnessed, so two sectors, they don't like to collaborate sometimes because we have to think we belong to the country. So this is the time where a strategic window has opened, but the window is going to be closed soon. So because of that, two different entities. So I think uh, we have to get together, opted out certain egos, then we can see a country with the future. But uh, there should be a proper framework. There should be an infrastructure. And even as I clearly proposed, the central bank, especially in case of this creative economy, can take initiative, I guess. So that is the simple answer. Yes, Professor, thank you very much. And as you said, central bank can take uh, definitely a role in that. So in that case, uh, may I ask uh, Dr. Chandra Tamarsekar to add something on the same question. How government can uh, uh, take part in such efforts and uh, make sure these uh, needed changes are accommodated. Dr. Amarsekar. Thank you very much, Prashant. And let me also congratulate uh, Professor Abhisekar for an excellent presentation. And it was uh, also great to uh, watch uh, Sixi Adanga Remga's uh, video as well. Um, um, and uh, so uh, I think uh, Professor Abhisekar gave a comprehensive uh, answer uh, to the question that was asked. And obviously, uh, definitely uh, we need private uh, sector and public sector collaboration for, uh, if we are to see an improvement uh, in, uh, in the creative economy. So if I go back to the Asian, ancient past of the country, the, we, we, we saw several examples and uh, obviously there was uh, government uh, or state support for the, 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 the great work that uh, were, were shown by Professor Abhisekar in his uh, presentation. Um, and uh, also, I mean, uh, when you think of the past, I mean, always, uh, we have been talking about, you know, concepts like Vavai, uh, Vavai, uh, uh, Vavai Dagabai, uh, Gamai Pansalai, that kind of concepts. And those have been, uh, so even now, I mean, uh, like uh, using the information that Professor Abhisekar provided, this is an agrarian economy, primarily agrarian economy, although there is uh, a large uh, industry and services uh, sector. But uh, even within a, 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 a large agrarian economy and with a large uh, number of people uh, employed in the agri agriculture sector, I'm sure we can uh, achieve uh, uh, an improved creative uh, economy and the improved uh, contribution to the economy through creative economy uh, if uh, the, the private sector and the public sector work together. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Amar Sekar, for that uh, answer. And uh, we have another question uh, from the audience uh, mentioning that 2021 is the UN, uh, that United Nations uh, International Year of creative economy and sustainable development. So he's asking, uh, are there any plans to use this platform to promote the creative economy, right? Uh, maybe an uh, kind of opportunity uh, with that. So if may I ask uh, Deputy Governor, uh, Mr. KMM Sirivaradana to answer that question. Especially with this uh, UN's international year, that's that's a uh, uh, sort of international year of creative economy, sustainable development. So, how we can use this platform to promote the creative economy? That was a question that has been asked. 
Uh, yeah, I think, uh, uh, first of all, again, uh, I also would like to thank uh, Professor Abhishek for sharing uh, his uh, knowledge in this uh, uh, very uh, important area. Um, I think we have already discussed uh, about the areas that we can concentrate on if we are to develop this uh, new economy. Of course, uh, if we can basically continue uh, in that direction and with the support of the private sector and also the government sector with the clear um, targets or clear path, so that would basically naturally will be a support uh, in achieving uh, these uh, sustainable development goals. You know that uh, one of the uh, key uh, SDG is the reduction of poverty. So Professor Abhisekar himself very clearly articulated that uh, by concentrating on these uh, important areas, particularly the SME sector and other related areas with the support of the CA government and, and particularly the banking sector and various other stakeholders. If you can develop these things and that will naturally be a kind of a support in achieving uh, these sustainable development goals. And, and, and to add that, I think we are already in that direction, but what we need is the, the strengthening of these efforts going forward so that we would be able to basically uh, walk towards that direction. That's my short answer for that. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much uh, for that answer. And uh, with that, I think, uh, given the interest of time, we have to conclude the Q&A session. And thank you very much for all the panelists as well as uh, for the audience too, for the active participation for the Q&A session. Uh, so with that, uh, I'd like to cordially invite again the Deputy Governor of Central Bank, Mr. K.M. Sirivardhana, uh, to deliver closing remarks for the program before winding up. Uh, thank you, Kushan. Uh, I'm not sure whether the Governor is uh, still with us, but anyway, uh, our guest speaker, Professor Nalin Abhisekar, and other panelists of this uh, webinar and all participants. Uh, in fact, uh, again, uh, I would like to thank Professor Abhisekar for his uh, very interesting, in fact, uh, uh, presentation and also the, the, the video that he shared with us uh, by uh, giving uh, live evidence uh, about the, this area. Uh, uh, we were able to basically uh, convince uh, how uh, strong and how powerful uh, these, uh, uh, these concepts are being uh, adopted in some of the countries and not just on the countries, but continents. And I think the webinar uh, uh, on the topic of uh, creative economy, uh, it's very timely and an important one, uh, particularly to our economy in this uh, very challenging situation. And also in the expected paradigm shift in the economy uh, that Professor Abhis uh, also highlighted. So the idea of uh, creative economy, uh, which was uh, well elaborated by the uh, professor, is something that we need to give serious consideration. Professor emphasized uh, the need for uh, concentrating on positives in this challenging period, and also on the strategic window that has been opened for Sri Lanka, which we should grab. He highlighted that it's imperative to understand the necessity of uh, focusing on more creative industries, where there is high income and potential with creative industries and ideas as key strategy in this new knowledge economy. Uh, Professor also highlighted uh, the importance of learning from success stories and aligning ourselves uh, in that direction. The professor highlighted the, the, the changes that should be accommodated uh, into the education system and also the uh, entrepreneurship uh, with creativity and the need for encouraging that. For that, I think there should be a mechanism to encourage people to try out new things. One of the very important messages that I got 
and without just only seeking for employment. And at the same time, this uh, collaborative and coordinated efforts uh, are very important uh, to facilitate uh, this uh, type of creative ventures because uh, of its potential to uh, create wealth and uh, job opportunities, and especially for uh, SMEs. And he uh, emphasized the young people, the youth, and the importance of basically helping them uh, to become partners of this new economy so that uh, poverty can be addressed going forward. So all in all, I believe uh, it's our responsibility to take uh, every possible effort and contribution to take Sri Lanka to the next level by using the uh, immense uh, potential in the creative economy uh, for reaping uh, higher and better prospects for everyone. Uh, in fact, the professor suggested uh, to set up a, a unit of creative economy uh, at the central bank. Certainly, uh, we will explore this uh, idea and try to see how uh, we can uh, facilitate it. Uh, of course, uh, it's very uh, early, too early to uh, uh, say something about uh, it uh, specifically, but uh, we'll see how we can uh, basically go forward, uh, of course, with the help of the other institutions, uh, including the, in the, in the Ministry of Finance and other, other agencies. So finally, uh, on behalf of the Central Bank, uh, I would like to thank our speaker, Professor Nalina Besekera, uh, who is the head uh, of the Department of Marketing Management, uh, Faculty of Management Studies, uh, Open University of Sri Lanka, for delivering this uh, interesting and uh, fruitful lecture, and also to the governor, uh, Deshamani Professor W. D. Lakshman, for uh, delivering uh, opening remarks and uh, the Deputy Governor Mrs. Fernando and the Director of Economic Research Dr. Amara Sekera for attending the event as panelists and specifically uh, the Center for Banking Studies for organizing this uh, important event. Also, I wish to express my sincere gratitude to all the participants at this seminar. So with that, uh, Thank you and have a pleasant evening. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Governor, for concretizing what we discussed with that uh, closing remark. And with that, uh, we have come to the end of today's webinar. Uh, thank you once again uh, to all of you who tuned in to us. And we will meet again uh, very soon with another interesting topic. Thank you once again. Good evening and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.